ready. So the DM decided to not do session one for the new, new campaign after all the debacles. Um, because they already did it once. Why would you do it again? And then, uh, yeah, then they found out, the players that is, found out that uh, there were no gods in this setting. So paladins and clerics were completely useless. Um, long story short, the DM was knocked into unconsciousness. So the session's canceled. Gotta, Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> What's up? You gotta, you gotta pre-plan these a little better. You're getting, you're getting weaker and weaker. I know. I know. look. Leave me alone, okay? Like you flounder it. <laughs> <laughs> look, they can't all be bangers. I've had good ones it's in true. the past. It's true. Also, without right. Matt here, it's harder. It like, I have more, usually more prep time for shit like this. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, Sessions Cancelled podcast. It's me, your boy, Isaiah. I'm here with Josh. I am here, yes. And, uh, so, yeah, so D&D has been putting out a lot, a lot of new videos recently to be talking about all the, all the shiz they're dropping in the 2024 Player's Handbook and such. And I basically did no looking at all because I didn't really care. Um... But then I heard that smites are a bonus action now, and I, you know, my interest in rage was peaked. So let's talk about uh, it. Worth pointing out, I mean, I've watched all of them at this point. Uh, Wizard, Wizard is the next one tomorrow. The one that dropped today was Druid. Uh, oh, actually, I haven't watched Druid, so I've watched all of them except for Druid. And uh, yeah. And uh, Fighter was the first one, right? Uh, the first one was everything you need to know about the 2024 Player's Handbook. Then we got Weapon Mastery. Then we got Character Origins. Then we got Fighter, Paladin, Barbarian, Rogue, Warlock, Druid. Tomorrow is Wizard. Gotcha. Uh, for you know, This is going to hilariously date things, but the date is relevant in this case. So we're recording on June 26th. Yes. Uh, so that is, your, that is the point of reference for information that we currently have. It is worth pointing out any information we're about to state is a vague combination of information from the previous playtests and the information they have told us in the videos. As of recording time, we have not seen anything written down because NDAs have not been lifted yet. Yes. So... Some of this is going to be speculation. Just to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be speculation yeah, I mean, and we may be just straight up wrong by the time it actually comes out. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're basically going to be going off of uh, what uh, Mr. Perkins has given us in the interviews. That's about it. Well, a combination of the of the crawfish and Perkins, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Like what Josh said, we just received sort of like finalized-ish, heavy on the ish uh, loadouts for some of the classes. <laughs> Big uh, ish, because they're just telling us what they're choosing to tell us in the videos. It's not like they're giving us every yeah. little specific detail. Yeah. Um, the one thing that it is pretty clear that they have brought back, which I'm very, very excited about, is epic boons. Uh, those have been gone for the last couple iterations, and I was really annoyed when they took them out because I was, you know, I mean, I said it in podcast months ago, right? Like, you have this really cool thing that you do nothing with. Do something with it. Uh, well, it's worth pointing out they and didn't they, they didn't remove epic boons from the game. They just they took them. Uh, at one point, they had decided that they were going to make Epic Boons the level 20 feature for every class, which is to say you hit level 20, you get an Epic Boon. They took that aspect out of the game. They took them out of the character progression, but they didn't necessarily remove Epic Boons across the board. Do you get what I mean? No, they, they so yeah, they brought it to the forefront as something that you can actively get. It's not like a if your GM is feeling nice. And then they proceeded to put it back on the back burner, which I was not happy about. But we're getting back again, so that's awesome. Yes, now instead, epic boons, every class will get at level 19. Which does mean if you multi-class, 
Uh, if you do any more than a one level dip, you ain't getting to that epic boon. No, you're not, and that is unfortunate. But uh, I think it they're doing a lot of people to. I think they're doing a lot of things to try and dis- dissuade uh, excessive multiclassing. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah. There's been a lot of changes I've noticed that seem like they're not saying it directly, but they seem like they're being put there to be like, no, don't you multiclass. Don't do it. Yeah, they're like, hey, I mean, you could multiclass, but here's this cool thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're giving you a carrot not to. Which I yeah. don't blame them for, I mean, to be honest. No, I mean, it like... It seems like they are really trying to issue a sort of balance to this new pseudo edition. And, you know, multiclassing is the best way to throw that balance into the trash. So, yes, kind of is what it is. With that in mind, um, to kick things off, one of the things that I really, really liked. No, no, no. But to kick things off, everyone who's listening is going to hit follow or subscribe on whatever platform they are currently listening on. Mm, that's right. Forgot about that. Now you make it. Okay. So first on the docket, <laughs> lay on hands is now a bonus action and it can be used on constructs and undead. Uh, it does still cure poison, but not disease. Uh, uh, it seems like disease is just removed from the game as a concept. Is it? All right. Well, uh, that's I, a little annoying. Um, they've basically made no reference to it, and it had so little, which is, it had basically no mechanical impetus prior to this anyway. So there was no point in keeping it around. So it's kind of whatever. I, I guess. So my, my thing is, right, is I've always wanted wizards to do more with status effects um, because there's a bunch of them and the ones that you end up seeing are poisoned, which is basically useless, stunned, which is really powerful, and paralyzed, which is really mean. Poisoned is not useless. Much it gives I mean, you a disadvantage charmed. on everything. Yeah, but most things can can just negate poison in terms of like enemies. Oh, enemies, yeah. Yeah. Um and on the you know, on the player siding things, or si- players player side facing things. There's just a million and one ways to get rid of poisoned anyway as a condition, you know? I mean, yeah, that's true, too. But I uh, So, but disease was never yeah. a status effect anyway. No, but it gave you status effects and it altered the way you had to play the game, which I thought, which I liked a lot. It didn't, but they just never came up. It did. No, it didn't. There, disease had no mechanical. There was nothing. There was nothing hard coded mechanical in the game that about disease. It's just that sometimes certain little adventure tidbits and stuff would reference a disease of some kind and that disease would do something, you know, some sort of like a debuff. But there was no like there was no rule about disease in the player's handbook or the DMG. There was no like set in stone thing. It was never I, what do you Sir, the, the SRD has three sample diseases. Yeah, those are like those are like sample. Those are like examples from the DMG. But the, like, that's what I mean. Sometimes the, the game would sometimes put a disease in there as like a as an example of, you know, like it would be an adventure or or from the DMG. And it'd be like, here's a way you could run, like do a disease. But it wasn't. The phrase, the word disease didn't have any set in stone mechanics to it. So the idea that a class had an ability to negate said mechanic, that's kind of like a half ass non-existent mechanic is weird and pointless. So it ends up not really being a big deal that they removed it. So now instead you could just like the idea of diseases in play were mostly this fictionally backed thing anyway. So, like, this weird, like, it's sort of a mechanic, sort of not in between. I don't think it's a big deal. They took it out. And, like, how many people were really doing anything with it anyway? Like, the idea of it, you know? No, I mean, not many, but it's one of those things where I would have wanted to see a little bit with it. Like, you had a, there was a, this opportunity now that it doesn't cure disease that you can start bringing disease in as something that can be used in play more regularly as like plot hooks 
or characters. We can have more of them. That could um, still be on the table. Keep in mind, we've seen literally nothing. Nothing at all of the DMG. So, like, we have no idea what could be on the table for that book. You know? True, true. Um, and, like, like I, I said it in my notes, right? Like, it's a, it's a sad kind of weird choice, but... Ultimately, Leon Hands is stronger, and it will feel better to play. So overall, well, that's Leon's good. Ha- yeah, Leon Hands is going to be better combat wise for sure. Did they specifically say? Oh, I guess we should. Did we ever specify that we're talking about Paladin specifically? Yeah. Say that. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like you didn't say that, because then that Why? makes it. Because I look less dumb if you didn't say it, but if you did say it, I look dumb. I'm going to pretend you never actually mentioned Paladin. So we're talking about Paladin. Specifically. Yes, motherfucker. (laughs) God damn it. Well, either way. um, I'm going to be honest. I actually, I don't remember them mentioning Lay on Hands as a bonus action in the video, TBH. (laughs) They do at the very, very beginning. Okay, fair enough. Um... They have also turned paladins into level one casters, but you know this isn't really surprising. They've been making they're making active strides to standardize casters across the board. Yes, um, they have uh, limited the number of prepared spells to a fixed amount, which well, again, not surprising. <laughs> not surprising. Um, they basically already worked again, that way. <laughs> yeah, well, they so they did the other thing. They did they, they did the old thing, which is. Um, you know, your modifier chooses that, but they're, it seems like they're trying to forget about that entirely, except they aren't because there's a situation later on where modifier based charges are still a thing. So I don't really know what's going on with that. I I, I, I believe it's kind of dumb that they're just getting rid of it. I don't know. I don't think the idea is to get rid of the idea as modifier like modifier being an ammo count. I don't know that they're trying to remove it from the game completely. I think the idea is that they just want to remove it as a an, uh, they want to take it out for anything where it is deeply vitally important to your class. So right, removing the number of spells that you could potentially have Making it so that's not reliant on your modifier means that you could have a paladin who's like, you know, a little suboptimal in their charisma. Excuse me. And still be able to use their spells, right? Like they just they don't want people to be hampered to the point of nigh uselessness. So they're key. It seems like they're sort of keeping around the modifier for things where it's not as important, but removing it for stuff that's like really vital. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, them being level one casters, I think is fine. They're not getting more spells either. They're getting the same amount. They just spread them out a little bit more. Um, and they're going to do, they said they were doing the same thing with, or actually we haven't gotten the video on Ranger yet, but in the play test Rangers were level one casters also. So like makes sense. It, it's also really good go- side note, just from a purely fictional standpoint, it's really goofy to think that like, ah, I am a paladin of first level. I have trained hard and devoted myself to my God or my oath or whatever the fuck. I can't use my magic yet, though. Tomorrow, after we do this adventure, then I can use my magic. Like that never made any sense to me anyway. <laughs> you know? No, no. From I, a purely yeah, fictional no, standpoint, it's like, huh? the fuck just like a lot of the subclasses which by the way we're not talking about them but i just man i don't know how how do you how do you fictionally square the circle of warlocks and clerics not having their subclass at level one you don't yeah you You just don't it feels so awkward it feels so yeah i i don't know i will say i will mention they did say, I think in the everything you need to know episode or, or video episode, um, they did say that they are going to put a like specific paragraph or couple of paragraphs uh, saying uh, don't start at level one if you have played the game already. 
So like they're going to more actively discourage people from starting at level one and just starting at level three. Yes. Yes. Which is good. Oh my God, bro. You have no idea. I didn't know that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I think That's that was amazing. the video where they said it. Like they were like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to like actually call it out because the game was already doing that anyway. They just didn't call it out specifically, you know? Yeah. Um, but yes, the idea of like, I'm a level one warlock. I don't have a patron yet. So where your warlock come, powers come from, I think about it really hard. I, I'm thinking I about... I just really want powers. I just really want to have a patron so I get powers, but like I don't have a patron. I'm an intern. I'm in my training hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the market right now. You know, I, I, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. still kind of going I, over my options. You know, when you first... Yeah, do, when you, first <laughs> you know that first week on the job when you're under training hours, so you get paid a different amount? I'm doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i don't get tipped out at the end of the night but i'm getting paid more per hour than the servers are you know that whole situation <laughs> uh <laughs> anyway uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know um I, I something interesting to note i mean it is yeah for sure um this is not even this is not like a, a good or bad thing just kind of surprised me uh, is that uh weapon mastery is just a straight up character ability now it was always a character. Ability. I didn't think they. Well, I, okay, fair enough. I, I I didn't know that, or I may have missed it. I figured it was just going to be something that was on a separate table, and you could look up that table in character creation and then just copy them down. Oh no, because um, different um, the classes interact with it differently, so it's not yeah, it's not like a just copy it. Got it. Because, um, like, fighter is going to have a whole bunch of them. Rogue is only going to have very few. Uh, in the playtest, Ranger has the ability to swap them out. I don't know if they're going to keep that or not. But, like, yeah, everybody kind of utilizes them a little bit differently. And it seems like they also mentioned in the one video about the Rogue that the Soul Knife is going to get mastery properties. Pro properties? What? Properties. Properties. <laughs> properties. Um, is going to get mastery properties for their, um, uh, what's it called? For the their soul knife. For their soul. Is it just called? It's for their psi knife? For their psychic blade? Their psychic blade thingy that they summon, they're going to get mastery properties for the psychic blade thingy. So everybody's interacting with the mastery properties a little bit differently. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, hmm. I have to think about that more. Uh, the one thing that I thought was a little weird about it is that they get swapped like prepared spells. So not for everyone. I think fighter can do that. And ranger might be able to do that. But like, I don't think like rogue. I guess I'm saying not, it, it's it's it is kind of like a spell thing, but not for everybody. <laughs> We have, we have to see. So the problem is we've had a couple of versions from the playtest, and then we have what they said in the videos. So now all of the versions have melded into an incorporeal soup in my brain. So I don't remember exactly which version is is going to be on paper. But the, the yes, the I believe the final version is like certain characters like fighters are going to be able to swap them out, but not everyone. I feel like that's a little goofy. It's a little unclear right now. I think it will become more clear once we have, you know, book and page in front of us, you know? Yeah, I, I just mean, like, let's say you get three masteries, right? And yes. you get to use two a day. You just get less good at that weapon. <laughs> um, Like, yeah, I, just, I, I'm not sure. Exactly. Yeah, it's, not, it's not, not even clear. a huge deal, right? Because most player characters aren't going to deviate from their standard kit much anyway. Well, so it's really not the end of the world. It's not something like, well, OK, like here I am. You can, for example, if you're like a cleric and you start with a mace, but then you get a really cool flail, you'll switch that. Right, right. Uh, but 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 uh, Mr. Mr. Crawfish, Mr. Joffrey Crawfrey did talk about doing more weapon switching in the fighter video specifically so that might be changing I would love to see how they're going to do that because I've never really been that incentivized to use different stuff 
So, yeah, he basically said... Well, that- hold on. For my first character, I did sw- swap a lot because I was one okay. of the main tanks. I was off tank, but also range DPS. So I did have to get pretty good at going from sword and board to gun pretty quickly. But, like, save for Ilias, I don't think I've ever had to do that a separate time. So, he, yeah, he, he wasn't specific in the hows, but... Mr. Mr. Crawfish did say in the fighter video that the weapon mastery system, part of the point of it is to encourage using different weapons. And he said in their playtest game that he was swapping his weapons around a lot playing a fighter. He didn't specify what that meant exactly. He didn't say... I swapped to a different weapon every attack or I swapped different weapons between fights or like he didn't really get into the details. He just mentioned that. So I don't exactly know what's going on there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, not for nothing. I mean, we, we probably should have had an episode on weapon masteries. We might. I might do that in my next round around. But I've been mean, good. I feel like on average, they don't do enough to warrant that. Yeah, I don't know. But is that the, me? Am well, I crazy? I mean, we haven't seen the final versions of them, so they may have been uh, improved and or, you know, worked, uh, reworked. So there's that. But I mean, it might. So the game as it is right. Ooh, excuse me. The game as it is right now. N- no, they might not be enough to warrant a lot of swippy swappy but if they change how the how the rules for swapping weapons out works they might become worth it to swap around you know what i'm saying they might and i and i'm not i'm gonna be real i hope that there is something really interesting going on because i forgot that that made a sound okay what 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 uh, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I do hope that they do like more interesting stuff because I like the idea of sort of being a, a you know, a, a walking armory, master. so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool idea to like, to, you know, you have a sword and you stab a guy and you pick up a spear and then you do some cool spear stuff and then you stab somebody and pick up their axe and like you just kind of run a gauntlet on people like that's a really cool you're just doing the warrior of light thing from shadowbringers that'd be sick uh it's a cool idea i will say it's one of those things that ooh, I, I i question how well that would work in a game if it would go from being cool to annoying really fucking quickly you know well i mean it'd be annoying if you had to do it but if that's how you like want, like if it if it's a choice rather than a necessity, then it's cool. If it's a necessity, then it's well, annoying, the argument you know? would be that if you want, yeah, the argument would be if you want to play optimally, then it would be a necessity to do optimally. You know what I mean? So like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 a lot of it's. Again, you know, and it also could just be it also just could be jaw crawfery, like, you know, hyping us up and, and, and making it sound why, spicier. Why do you keep doing <laughs> that? Doing what? Doing what? You know what you're fucking doing. What am I doing? <laughs> Cut it out. What am I doing? The 18 trillion <laughs> nicknames. You're treating this man like he's shizzy, a.k.a. Capri Sun the God. Like, what are you doing? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, continue. I shouldn't be calling this man Teen Mom Season 5. I'm just going to lose. <laughs> Where the fuck even was I in my notes? <laughs> oh. Um... <laughs> So paladins no longer have a curated list of fighting styles. They just get access to the full gambit, which good, you know. Um, yeah, I was never a fan of like the curated the fighter. list. Yeah, they, pretty much ever. Like, I feel like I, if you have the fighting style thing, you should just have access to the full list. Okay, so here's my thing. Here's what I'll say about that. 
Uh, I'm okay with the idea, like, the idea of the curated list I understand because it's kind of a niche protection thing, right? It, it makes fighter feel a little bit more special that they get the entire swath of fighting styles because the whole point of fighter is to be versatile and you can make any kind of fighter you could possibly imagine, right? So I, I'm okay with the idea of the curated list. That being said... If there was any other class in the game that I would give the entire list of fighting styles along with the fighter, it would be the paladin because paladins are kind oh, of really? pseudo fighters anyway. Well, I, I would say monk. No, because monk's whole niche thing is I don't actually need weapons unless I'm the Kensei specifically, you know, so like I think it's OK to keep them curated in terms of fighting style. Mm. You know? I do. I think if you're going Kensei, guess. then you should get access to a bunch of them. Sure, yeah. Um, but you yeah, also I, run into that weird situation if you take the fighting style feat, you have access to the full list. But does it give you the if full? You didn't list? give them access to the full list. You, yes, it is. Oh, that is a little weird. Yeah. Well, because then you run into the problem, right? If you give, if you make a curated list for the feat, how do you choose that curated list? Because no, like. There's going to be a bunch of people who are unhappy no matter what you do, right? Like, well, I really wanted blind blind fighting, and now right, I can't right, do yeah. blind fighting. And it's like, well... But I think, you know, fuck, uh, look, when it comes to the game design thing, you're going to make... You can't please everybody, and you need to make decisions. And when it comes to the idea of niche perception and classes having their own uniqueness to them, you know, you have to decide where you're going to do that. And I think it makes sense to limit fighting styles because there are certain archetypes that fall in line with certain classes. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. You know, you're not going to make everyone happy, but I get it. But I do. I think for Paladin, it makes sense because Paladins are effectively, you know, they are marshals for the most part, you know, and they are the other main sword board marshal, marshal fellow next to the fighter. So I think it makes sense. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, you can forgo, forgo. Damn it! You can forgo. You can forgo your fighting style for access to cleric cantrips. I actually like that a lot. Uh, that's th that really cool. Already a thing. That that gives you full breadth to be like, well, I want to be more of a casty paladin. Now you can, right? You have an incentive to do that. That's sick. You know that's not you, right? No, it's not. But it's like from Tasha's, I like that they're. I I know it is, but now it's in the player's handbook. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's good to have it in the player's handbook. But yeah, that was in Tasha's. Uh, Rangers got the same thing for Druid spells. They did, yes. Now, to be fair, I know that there are, are not many good uh, damage cantrips for clerics. I, look, bud, I, Se I Sacred Flame you, does yeah, fucking it? work. What are you talking about? I have never had Sacred Flame ever work. Sacred Flame. It's like awesome. chromatic. It's just. It, it's not. I, I don't know. A, it's like chromatic you, orb. This is a you problem. No, it's not just me. I know so many people who are like, God, Sacred Flame is so cool. Nah. It just never fucking works. I've used Sacred Flame to. I use Sacred Flame a, a whole shitload for. Uh, what was it? All right. Now I can't remember, but. Sacred Flame does work, and even if you don't want to do Sacred Flame, Toll the Dead. Oh, true. The Toll the Dead is pretty sick. Toll right, the I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that back. <laughs> Toll the Dead does fuck. All right, I'll give you that. I also love the <laughs> idea of a Paladin with Toll the Dead. I do too. I like get rid of this fucking happy go lucky for the Emperor Paladins. Give me like a cool Lich Paladin. Why not both? I suppose the Emperor is a Lich, kind of, sort of, if you think about it from a certain point of view, isn't he? I just meant, why not have both versions of Paladin? <laughs> you can have both. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, you already have one. Give us more of the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. Gotta equalize. I do feel like, uh, what was it called? Oathbreaker Paladin should have been put in the player's handbook, but it is not. I kind of just want them to get rid of Oathbreaker. What? No, I like Oathbreaker. Oathbreaker's cool. What are you talking about? Or just call it something else. Like, I oh, hate yeah, that yeah. it's called the, Oathbreaker. The, aim, the name's not good. It should be called, like, Dread Paladin or something. Oath of Dread, yeah. Oath of Death, Oath of Suffering. I don't know. Yeah, Oathbreaker's um, not a good name. Yeah, no. Now, 
because the to Mac get to the spiciest part doesn't totally fail. Oh boy, here we go, everybody, no, get out your fucking Cajun! All right, look, here we go. You put the Cajun in the crock pot. Yeah, me and Isaiah are gonna walk at fucking twenty paces or whatever it is. Turn and draw. All right, so Paladin Smite, I don't like it. I don't yeah, like I it at all. I know you don't like it. Uh, it is. I just. It, <sighs> I know it was powerful. I get it. I know that you could argue that it was overpowered. Yes, correct. Yes. But yes. it felt good and it was fun and it had like it like the meme. The smite is a meme for a reason. Uh, Why did you take that from me? Like I don't get it. Now, to describe what I'm talking about if you don't know, uh divine smite is now referred to as paladin smite and it is not a class ability. It is a spell. A spell that's always prepared and is activated through a reactionary bonus action, not a reaction. Uh, Big okay. distinction. Two things. One, um, we don't actually know if it's a bonus action. I don't think they said that part. They did. Did he specifically say it was a bonus action? Yes. Okay, we don't know the exact wording on it then, in that case. So I don't. It activates upon a bonus, like so. You well, you get the, the hit, in, and then in, you can use a bonus in the playtest. That was how it was worded, but we don't know if that's the final version. Fair enough. That that might be we're, a little. We're gonna bit, go off that, right? That's the information saying, we have, so we're just gonna go off. That it. might be up in the air. It may be a reaction in the final version because I don't remember uh, Jeremy Crocker's brother specify. If it's a reaction, you're gonna have me so fucked up why because that's just it like is that worse than a bonus action no but it just i know that reactions are not used that often they're not no. fair enough but i don't like the idea of wasting this thing that could be done with like that you could use for other things and not just reassign class abilities to them i just look uh, like I said, I don't know. I, I haven't. I, it's been a minute since I looked at that Paladin video, so I don't remember what Crawfish Man said uh, on that particular point. So that the wording of how it is activated is up in the air. The other thing I will say is, so it's still called Divine Smite. What Paladin Smite is is Paladin Smite is the name of the ability. Uh, on the character features list and Paladin Smite gives you access to a bunch of the Smite spells. One of those Smite spells sm Smite spells is Divine Smite. The other ones is stuff like Eldritch Smite and Searing Smite and Banishing Smite, you know, that crap. Mm -hmm. They didn't chain, they didn't like rename it. They bundled it in with other Smites. Uh, but it is a spell and the main thing that it being a spell does is make it so you can only do it once around. That's the biggest thing. I will say we don't know. So like, again, again, the crawfish cook pot did not tease out, <laughs> did not tease out all of the specifics about the divine smite thing. I kind of feel like he should have, because I feel like he, he knew that this was going to stir the pot, uh, the pot that the crawfish are in, but like he didn't. So we don't know if you're going to be able to counterspell it necessarily, because we don't know on the wording of how it activates. We don't know well, if it's, so a, that was, we don't know if it's a bonus. Hold, hold on. We don't know if it's a bonus action or a reaction yet. Or any. It may just be a thing where it's like you hit and burn a spell slot. It could just be that. We don't know. Uh, we know you get a free one. And we know that the damage works relatively the same. And... You... Uh, I forget. What was the other thing? There was like another thing. But uh, we don't know exactly. All we, What we know right now is it's a spell... It comes in from the Paladin Smite list. You always have it prepared. You get a free one. 
Presumably the damage is unchanged because the crawfish cookpot did not mention anything about the damage being changed. Although he didn't say anything about the undead damp bonus damage, I hope they didn't get rid of that. Uh, no, they, I, I'm going to be genuinely like they did. So in, I'll, I'll, I'll they did in the it. playtest, but you know, they did. Yeah. So overall, I'm not a fan of this. I'm just not. Do I hate it? No, but I'm not a fan. Okay, here's what um, I'll say about this. Divine Smite needed a needed a smack in the jimmies. Divine Smite needed a nerf. It needed to be looked at. Not even necessary. Here's okay. Here's one of the biggest things, right? Divine Smite. Let's try that again. <laughs> Divine Smite by itself. Mostly fine. No, that's not even true. It was okay. It was still very strong by itself. It really becomes a problem when you also start multiclassing it and comboing it with everything else. And because of the fact that it was literally just if I hit, I can declare bonus damage. Like right, mechanically, the way it works was if I hit the target, I can declare bonus damage. That was how that ability works. Because it worked that way, it was really easy to multi-class it and do stupid feet combos and stupid magic item combos and all this other bullshit that you could just easily wrangle it in there because of Divine Smite was so very loose with how it worked. So the idea of tightening down a little bit how Divine Smite functions, I understand. But I, and again, I've also been somebody that kind of hates the fact that you can declare it as soon as you hit a target, just for freezies, that still feels shitty and weird to me, but they didn't change that anyway, so whatever. <laughs> no, sounds, I mean, there, I don't think there's sounds, any way to change it and then it not feel shitty, because if you can if you can waste it, I don't think it's going to feel really shitty. There's ways I think you could make it work, and I don't think it ever should have been that way, but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now, because we'll be here for 45 minutes just on that. Point being... It needed to be looked at in some fashion. I don't think making it a spell specifically was the move necessarily. Because. Well, on one hand, I do understand making it a spell for the purpose uh, purposes of. You know. Uh, sort of game rule understanding, because when you. When you first read Divine Smite as like a newer player, it kind of seems like it is a spell, but mechanically it's not. So making it a spell mechanically for the sake of helping out with that new player comprehension, I kind of get. But in terms of nerfing it, I don't know that this was the best way to nerf it necessarily. So I'm kind of in the middle on the whole thing. That being said, I, you know, am I going to shed a tear for the Paladin players? Eh, not that much. Not that much. I'm going to be honest. As someone who is on the receiving end of Divine Smite bullshit very recently, uh, you know, a little bit of a smack upside the head, you know, eh, I'm not going to nah, say no. sir. I, look, I was also on the, on the receiving end of that, and I'm still just like, no, it was fine. Uh... You can still play the 2014 version, though. You can still play a 2014 you Paladin. Yeah, if you but want they're, to. they're... I feel like I would just want to mix and match. And I know it's like, oh, you can't have both ways. Like, oh, well, no, you cannot time. mix and match. But, they did say you can't mix and match. You have to pick. To say, uh, I'm going... Fuck. You have to say when, when you're declaring which book you're going to use, you have to stick to the book you're going to use with the exception of subclasses. So, like, if you're like, I'm going to play a 2020, if I'm going to play a 2014 Paladin and you have to stick to the 2014 Paladin in terms of, like, character progression and features and all that stuff. But you can slide in a 2024 subclass if you want to or vice versa. But you can't mix and match the features. Granted, yeah, I don't like that. Granted, it's a tabletop game. You can do literally whatever the fuck you want. The great cough crawfish gods have no power over you. Their fishy claws cannot pinch you. You can do whatever the fuck you want at the end. Uh, I, I will say, so the thing that I think was kind of goofy was they're like, oh yeah, you get one free use of smite. 
yes. that doesn't eat up a spell slot. And we're doing that to, to sort of stop with the spell slot drain. I don't know who has to tell you this, Jawcraw. It's not going to make it better. <laughs> it's not good. This is not going to be the remedy you think it is. It, it's people are going to go, oh, extra smite slot. Cool. And now I have to figure out what else, what else I'm going to do with these other smite slots. Like, yeah, well, I think the yeah, I mean, uh, the 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 crocker pot was trying to say, like, you're getting worse and worse, bud. You gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you're losing it. <laughs> While you're ahead. He was trying to say is like, you have to, you know, we're giving you a free one. So you could potentially, I think he wants paladins to use their spells a little bit more. And so he was trying to give a little bit of a, an alleviation there for the potential to use spells a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it. Is I, it going to work? I, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how you'd fix this. I genuinely, I don't. I'm not going to pretend I, I don't think. I mean, really, Divine Smite probably should have never been tied to spell slots, to be honest. <laughs> I, you know, I'm inclined to agree with you straight up. But also it, it, it in the form that it exists in 2014, if you uncoupled it from spell slots, it would be even more ludicrous, ludicrously fuck off powerful. So, like, it would need to be looked at. But if I were on the cutting room floor before 2014 released, you know, original 5e came out, I would not have tied it to spell slots at all, personally. And I'm, I mean, I, you know, I'm going to be real. I I just feel like if you gave it a like a just a unique number of ammo, then you can make it stupidly powerful. Well, you would have to give it a really small number of ammo then. Well, I mean, if you like, even if it's you have a number of them equal to, you know, whatever your like modifier is, your 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 proficiency. But like, no matter what, it always does like 8d8 or whatever. I mean, that and then you can get be... something later on that lets you like reroll ones or whatever, because you're never going to have more than those. Uh, I think that's probably I mean, 8 eights a lot. So I think I would lessen that even more so than a potential I, yes, six I'm, I'm just, uses. But I'm, sure, I get what you're saying. I'm just being extreme, yeah. Like, you you have an impetus to make it way stronger because you have a third of what you used to have. Yes, if if you were to if you were to tie it to its own resource pool, then yeah. If a mechanic is used less often, it's allowed to be more powerful, for sure. So, yes, you could definitely do that. And I would have been fine with that, actually. If Divine Smites were the kind of thing where you had to be more litigious about when you use them, but when you decided to use them, it was a big fuck off smacko. I would like that a lot more because I do think one of the things that I don't like about Divine Smite in the way that it currently works uh, in both rule sets, to be honest, is that Divine Smite kind of just, ha just happens all the goddamn time and fictionally it doesn't feel as cool as it could because if it happened less often, it have it would have way more fictional and narrative weight to it. So yes, I would be fine with that. But you know, if you're gonna keep it tied to spell slots, then other work has to be done. Um, so something that I think is kind of weird is, so you're you're right. They did sort of fold all the smites together. They did, yeah. Um, I'm I don't like this, but not as a general thing. And I brought this up like months ago. My ideal, right, would be you just turn Divine Smite into something like Eldritch Blast. And you like you turn the other smites into, say, like invocations. Yeah, I could see that. And that way, you know, they still do. So uh, let's say if you level one Divine Smite rather than it doing, I think what is what, two or three D8? I think it's three D8. I think it's two. All right, 2d8. So then you say, uh, you know, you do one less die, but then you have the special effect. And then, you know, as you get hit the higher levels, you're still doing a lot of damage because you're only removing one die. But now you're wrapping the effect effect in with it, you know? And um, yes, that would make it very yeah, powerful. I could see that as an option. I mean, yeah, you sort of. I think you lose you, in balance, you make up for in really unique and interesting mechanic. Well, I think you would have to play with if you were to 
if you were to lump the other um, smite ability, the other smite spells into Divine Smite, I think you would need to noodle around and consider... You need to play with the damage and really think about how you would want to handle that. Like, you'd have to you'd have to futz with it more. Um, but I don't think that's off the table. I think that could definitely be a potentially interesting idea. You know, and then you could also have paladins who basically customize which smite they care about more. Uh, which could be fun. Speaking of, did you hear where... Uh, Oh, well, I don't know if you watched the Warlock video, but we're getting more invocations. Let's go, baby. We're getting more invocations, not. and all of the packed abilities are turning into invocations so you can take multiple of them. So you could be a Pact of the Blade and a Pact of the Chain and a Pact of the fucking Tome and Talisman all at the same time. I saw that. I yeah. My only thing there was... You, uh, you would need more invocation slots. I don't know if you do or don't. No, you do. That's what I'm saying. You, you get want, more. You get more slots to, to use with. You get more total. You get more invocations, period. Okay. Like, the whole class is getting more invocations. No, but you know what I'm saying, though, right? Like, do you get more in that there are more to take or more that you can take? Both. So if there's... if there's Okay, sorry. That's fine, then. Both. Uh, they also um, they said there's going to be more invocations that modify uh, Warlock cantrips so you don't have to just be Captain Eldritch Blast. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, so one of my favorite... Praise um, be the Craw God. One of my favorite Warlock cantrips is Lightning Leash and Shocking Rasp. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know... I, I, I also want to hit someone with a Chidori. Yes, know? yes, yes. I mean, he didn't I want to uh, live my ultimate shinobi life. Uh, the the jaw cro uh, crockers in sports mode did not specify. Just stop. Wait. Just get <laughs> this shit out, bro. I'm so done. It's just getting dumber. Just stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, that was a good that was a good one. <laughs> I I want a clip. I, I Brett won't do this, but I hope he does. Just put a clip of all of them together. Super cut. And just do like a like a, a fucking a, 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 I mean, a counter. Listen, you know, we can, we could discuss afterward. <laughs> Jesus Mary. You are ready for that one. <laughs> no, you were fucking saying. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> you know, it's a shame I don't have as good of these with, uh, like, I don't have anything in mind for Chrissy P. <laughs> I gotta start writing down some Perkins ones. <laughs> um, what I was, <laughs> what I was saying is he didn't <laughs> he didn't specify which cantrips are specifically going to get invocations. So like. You know, you could be disappointed with that particular aspect, but he said they are looking at other cantrips getting invocations in general. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, Divine Smite's in a weird spot. I think if nothing else, everyone agrees, it's in a weird place. I think it is in a very weird place. I think that's like the like whether you're a fan or not a fan, it's a weird situation. And they tried they tried their damnedest, I think, to try and make everyone happy. And when you try and make everyone happy, what usually ends up happening is you make no one happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh speaking of making no one happy, uh uh. -huh. So Divine Sense. Nah, speak for yourself. Uh I, I was mainly joking. Divine Sense okay. has been wrapped up with Channel Divinity and now lasts for 10 minutes. Uh, to me, this is a great trade-off. It's actually fantastic. Okay, I was about to say uh, I like We'll this. have to see what the exact wording is to make sure that doors can't be your ultimate nemesis. Uh, I believe he's... I, be, I, I believe at some point in time... Uh, the the crawfish brought us a message from their mighty claws and said that we're... Uh, it, it won't just be blocked by doors and windows. <laughs> Okay, good. Then it'll be a great trade-off. Yeah, I, I I think I remember um, that being stated at some point. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm cool with this. Of, I, I think... 
Also, I like that it's 10 minutes now because you can walk around with your divine, you know, phalanges feeling out into the airspace. Well, so it's kind of funny, right? That's how most GMs I've played with have ruled it anyway. <laughs> yeah, but that's not technically how it works. <laughs> I know, I know. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's going to be different on paper, but for a lot of people, we'll play the exact fucking same. <laughs> uh, not exactly. I mean, no, I think the other part, like being blocked by, you know, a pane of glass is is going to be important. I, to be fair, though, most people don't want it like that either. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who was and wasn't ignoring that. That's always I'm, why I've, I've played I, with a, with many separate GMs, and not a single one of them have run it like that. In fact, I think most of them weren't even aware that that was technically a thing. Probably, I distinctly remember when we did the Paladin episode of the Class Handbook series, how I mentioned that um, Divine Sense is one of those abilities that conceptually is my absolute favorite thing on the planet and then mechanically is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen in my life <laughs> so it, yeah I'm very happy that they looked at that and were like let's make this not fucking stupid big fan of that big fan of that on that train uh, we are actually getting more channel divinities we are, and we yeah. are getting more options for getting them back I believe the cleric is, is also going to get more let's fucking go and honestly i just want them to be more powerful i like channel divinities but a lot of them aren't great i believe that was also mentioned as being looked at thank god like i'm trying to think that it's like you know the the war clerics they get the like oh you just get a plus 10 to a roll that's really powerful that's really cool but most of them are not like that <laughs> Uh, Fuck, I mean, yeah. uh, the fucking the Twilight one where you just make that weird zone of Twilight and you could like fly in it and it gives you cover and heals you better. Yeah, I yeah. want channel divinities like that. I, I mean, I want that them one to be was that, that one level was of wacky. That one was overtuned. That shit was t Twilight domains. Ridiculous, dude. I it is, but I kind of love it. This shit was way too powerful, but it, it's got the right spirit for sure. It's got the chutzpah. Mm. Uh, for the record, you so everyone starts with two channel divinities as opposed to one. Uh, at level eleven, you get three of them, and they regenerated on short or long rest as previously. But on a short rest, you get one back. On a long rest, you get all of them back. So it won't be as relevant at early level, but once you, if you do get to higher level, it will be a lot more relevant to you. Side note: Is this the first time? I, and this is going to sound fucking ridiculous because. This seems so obvious, but is this the first time where an ability has gotten a partial recharge on a short rest and a full recharge on a long? Like, I can't think of anything else that works that way. I can't either. Now that I think about it, that's fucking hmm. that's crazy, right? Like, that's such an obvious that is a little thing. Wacky, yeah, like, yeah, a short rest gives you a couple of the thingy and then a long rest gives you all. Like, why is there no abilities like like arcane recovery? Uh, uh. Yeah, I was going to say Arcane Recovery. Well, no, but think about how Arcane Recovery works. Arcane Recovery specifically is the wizard sits down and... Or is it part of the short rest? Hold on. Now I have to think about how it's worded. I might be a little bit talking out my ass on this one. Hold on. Let me, let me double check Arcane Recovery. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody, everybody hold on to your, your craw balls. <laughs> what the fuck even... <laughs> I'm running low on ideas. I'm grasping for straw. I can tell. <laughs> I'm trying to find where the fuck arcane recovery is. Hold on. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, once per day, when you finish a short rest, you choose expended spell slots to recover. Okay. So arcane recovery does sort of kind of work that way, but it's. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of the only other example I could think of, though, right? Like, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they should utilize that more. <laughs> I don't like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get some of your channel to or like imagine if like as a fighter, you get a cup, you get a second wind back on a short rest, like, uh, like just one. Like, is that so unreasonable? <laughs> you know, 
There is Weird. an impetus to where, we'll, where we'll start seeing more of that as we get higher in level, like as we get farther along. I can see a situation where you'll get that. Uh, like, I would hope so. Essentially it, with, it, uh, it, it makes sense, especially because a lot of people are like, uh, only certain classes care about short rest. Well, if everybody gets a little something, something, a little tickle on the grundle for a short rest, then suddenly everybody cares about a short rest. Right? Like, yeah. Partial key points, partial spell slots, partial channel divinities, fucking a couple of second wind, you know, all that. Imagine, I mean, Druid, imagine if you got like more wild shapes, but only like you get half your wild shapes back on a short rest, all of them on the long rest. Like there's a lot of potential there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can see a situation where you get your, um, your battle mass maneuvers back. You get like get like a handful of them one or two of them back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Weird, weird, weird thing, I think especially didn't. since stuff like that, where it's like, oh, yeah, like a lot of the capstones are like. Oh, if you don't have any, you get one back. Then you're like, oh, cool. Just one. Oh, fantastic. I love yeah, that. So yeah. much fun. Yeah. Or like a D4. But now if you get them back more readily, you're like, oh, thank God I got another one back. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I know a lot of people are like, oh, they need to shorten long uh, short rest to 10 minutes or whatever. I'm like, does the number fucking matter? A lot of people get, um, get this is all right. This is a rant. This is a rant. This is a rant. I'm doing it. I'm doing the thing. I, I like of, that. What well, real quick? I like that every time I'm about to start a point and go um, you immediately st like start something up. I'm like, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, okay. No, it's just specifically when I say whenever I say the word um, it, and it, just, it, it makes it really awkward. For, uh, finish in the, read, in the read. Finish where you were going with that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say the um, go ahead. Fuck! I have to stop saying um. It's pissing me off. Uh, just, just do the thing. what what what. It's gonna rant about the no, short rest time. Okay, my thing. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 no, no. To be fair, a lot of people say that because you want overlap with spells. Because most spells don't last longer than an hour. So if you have one, that's if you have like a, a team buff up, and you're like, oh, we have to take a short rest. We're gonna lose this buff, and I only get one per long rest. But I feel like if you know, we, you know, we didn't get our, we didn't, we weren't able to maximize its utility. Okay, I didn't, I didn't consider that 100. percent That's a fair argument. You got an argument there. I always think about it in the context of people being like, oh, uh, an hour is too long. You know, like fictionally, so much shit can happen in an hour. But to me, I'm like 10 minutes, an hour. I'm going to be honest on the GM side of the screen. If you do something, if you do nothing for 10 minutes or do nothing for an hour, I'm going to have the, the the bad guys react the same way. Right. They're going to do something in that span of time. It doesn't really matter how long it is. That's always my response to it. But the spell timer thing is a fair point. Which is why I like games that don't utilize specific number timers for their ability lengths. But, you know, that's a different diatribe. Yes, I mean, as the more that I'm learning new uh, systems, the more I like the this just lasts for a scene. For a scene, yes, correct. That is. Yeah, and a scene yeah. can mean literally anything. A scene is as long as you need it to be. Yep. <laughs> um, all right, take us on to the next point before I fucking go down a different... Oh, for well, stream. Uh, we're so we said we weren't going to talk about the subclasses, except we kind of are because they did talk about them a little bit. I, uh, I don't remember specifying we weren't going to talk about subclasses. I believe you said early on we're not going to do subclasses. I didn't say that. All right, maybe not. Though. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that you did, so I don't feel stupid. All right, fair enough. Yeah, got me there. Got me there. Uh, so with devotion. All of its ability timers have been bumped up and they can also provide cover with their smites through their protective smite, which interestingly, I feel like that does kind of act like an invocation now. Was it through their smites? I thought it was through the aura they provided protection. No, no, you get a they get a whole new smite called the smite of protection. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was kind of neat. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm, comprende, papi. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. That's that's a fun idea. I didn't realize that was what that was. I thought that was just their, um, their uh, aura. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, Holy Nimbus and Sacred Weapon specifically are the two abilities I'm talking about. They have been increased from I don't even know what to 10 minutes, which is solid. I think those and, are both uh, a as, a, as a small shout out. Probably was, yeah. Shout out to like hot granny paladin uh, oh, in the video, the, the main like, the, paladin the art compilation. Yeah, yeah, I, bro, 
Wood. 1000% wood. Uh huh. <laughs> Kilf energy is powerful. <laughs> okay, good to know. With her fucking sunblade. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Look, I it's it's all fun and games until I get pile drived into the concrete floor, and you know what? I'll be fine with that. <laughs> God damn. I want her to call me an infidel and beat me. Down, down, boy. <laughs> On to Glory Paladin. Uh, their peerless athlete timer was bumped up to an hour, and it has an increased aura. Uh. Mr. Craw said that the reason for this was to... Uh, I believe his name is Jeremy Glor- Betty Crocker. No, silence. Silence, batter witch. No one's going to get that joke. <laughs> Shout out to anyone who watches us who read Homestuck, I guess. Sure. Betty Crocker is an evil space fascist. Oh. It's that, great. That's not what I meant, but all right. No, it's fine. It, she's, like, she's like an evil... Ish. space fascist they call her they call her sea hitler a lot because you know oh time anyway <laughs> you'll never think of Betty crocker the same i do really like what he was talking about the the example he made that peerless athlete is supposed to make you this sort of literal hercules yes and only having this really sick ability last for a minute feels kind of shitty so by bumping it to an hour you basically have the however long the scene is going to be right you it sort of becomes a, a non-issue at that point yeah, just understanding that it yeah. will end at some point yeah and that's really cool i like that a lot uh i, I mean the honest- ability gives you advantage on all like strength decks and con saves as well as skills that have to do with them so that's pretty sick uh, yeah you just get very chadly at doing athletic things is is the long and short of it um i will say honestly the idea a lot of the games like sicko modes only last a minute and i think that is so goofy i understand like i understand from a mechanical standpoint why they only last a minute because that's 10 rounds and that's a good easy number to like keep track of and from a mechanical standpoint that's a reasonably you know balanced amount of time but also like the fact that undead warlock is like I activate my undying lich form for one minute it's yeah. just like for 60 seconds I'm a god <laughs> yeah for 60 seconds I'm a god like it, it's just like a really weird goofy anime like it's some like final getsu got ten show nonsense where it's like I can uh, it, activate I was gonna my say it, it literally is the Ichigo hollow mask yeah, I yeah. can activate it for 11 yeah, seconds yeah <laughs> it's like it's really kind of goofy nonsense and like I don't know I know 5e is very anime already but that one always has felt a little weird to me <laughs> did you so here's, here's some fun trivia did you know that you can actually I think it's it's he bumps up the timer for it uh, in his like the first fight where he gets his ass beat by Grim Jow, yeah. and it does actually only last that number of time. Oh, I mean, I've it's never... one of those things where you don't really think about it, and then you go and then you oh. time it. Oh yeah. shit, that's awesome! Yeah, my brother's actually rewatching Bleach right now, and he got to that episode, and he <laughs> was like, "Bro, how are you gonna do, my man?" <laughs> Are you going to beat his ass like a <laughs> Cherokee drum and then BM on him and then just leave? Everybody's a, like, ga- yeah, everybody's I mean, a gangster until Green Jow beats you up to the NFL theme. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all fun in <laughs> games until he starts doing the, the Ali shuffle in midair. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm so happy Grim Jow, like didn't actually die. Like The fact that he comes back is so sick. I mean, it's some Deus Ex Machina bullshit, but it's still kind of fun. Look, he came back with new drip and a six scar, and uh, he's a good guy now. And his whole thing is he's like, I just want a rematch. And you know, he's not going to win. You know, he can't win, but he really <laughs> believes that he can. And you know what? <laughs> you got to give him something. for. I trying. appreciate his chutzpah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I appreciate his enthusiasm. I think Ichigo does as well. <laughs> I do. I do love the fact he comes back with better drip. I think it's so funny. <laughs> Look, I, the the is the Iran car was drippy right like it they was. had some drip but it was some of their outfits were really dumb yeah. uh and his was sick specifically but like no he told us 
dog shit. He's the biggest piece of dog shit. <laughs> and now he comes back Sp- with his sick jeans <laughs> and his boots <laughs> and his cool button up. And you're like, hell yeah, dude. Wait, no Tora came back? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, well, I mean, they're all no, no, Noitor did. I mean, they're all going to come back now because of the new Hell arc, and that's going to be a whole thing. Oh. Um, but they're bad. Yeah, so Sael, the, the weird surgeon man with the pink hair, came back as like a bad guy, and he's like a he's not a hollow, he's a devil, and there's a difference, I guess. Uh, fuck, I can't what? wait for him to get his ass beat again because fuck him. Okay. Tor on his fucking spoon head, though. His stupid. I hate. <laughs> I, who I was talking to someone who was like, nah, Noitora is sick. And I'm just like, no, actually pause. Cut that shit out. <laughs> this is bait, and I know it's spoon- bait because there's no way you can be honest right now. Spoon ass, spoonhead looking motherfucker. Next you're gonna tell me that the stupid uh uh like psychedelic or uh, Arankar guy that gets murked by Byakuya was cool. No, he wasn't. Cut that shit out. I don't even know who you're talking about. The dude, his whole thing was oh god. What? I can't remember his name. He's the whole dude. His whole thing was the eyes. He had all the eyes on him. And then he fights Byakuya, and Byakuya's like, I, I literally just have more blades than you have eyes. I, what? What is What is the point oh, of this wait. right now? <laughs> Are you talking about the one who almost kills Rukia? Yes. The one whose final, whose resurrection's like gonorrhea. I- do, do you not remember that bit? It's like Gohanan Aria or something like that. I, I, so I, I think I know what you are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. Some of the Iran, some of the Espada sucked. That's right. He (laughs) did. He did hit him with the, I just have more blades than you have eyes. Fucking loser. (laughs) (laughs) I have a hundred eyes. Yeah. Well, I have a million. Yeah. Like this is literally a (laughs) non-issue. I have have literally, you can count them. One million (laughs) swords. (laughs) Yeah, and then he's got like he's like damn bro he got like 12 swords that's, that's such a flex <laughs> oh my god and remember the whole the fight ends because he's like i can keep making more eyes and Bianca is like okay. yeah but like i doubt you have the surface area for a million though yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like i still have more swords oh fuck anyway <laughs> Anyway, it's not. <laughs> anyway, um, the Tiefling Paladin also 100% would. Uh, I don't. I didn't. I don't remember the Tiefling Paladin one. I'll pull a picture after. Okay. Um, Ancients Paladin. Uh, the aura of warding now affects uh, specific damage types: necrotic, psychic, and radiant specifically, rather than all damage coming from spells. And Undying Sentinel now lets you regain three times your Paladin level in HP, rather than from dropping you from zero back to one. From a balance point of view, not a huge fan, um, but I do really like that there's a targeted effort to make this feel more in line with like a paladin vibe, like defending against specific, potentially evil damage types. I like that a lot. That goes back in line with doing extra damage to fiends and undead. So yeah, it's good. Also, if it's not there, bring that fucking shit back. Uh, That's going to kill me for doing that. By the way, it was uh, the the, the wrong card in question was the, the, the black dude. Spike Mohawk. Uh, his name was Zanmari Ruxu? Ruxu? I'm not sure how you're supposed to say Zanmari. It. It's the black dude. It's the one black dude in the Iran car. I don't know how else to. That's not true. <laughs> Tosin exists. You put respect on his Tosin's name. Tosin's not Nespada. <laughs> yes, he is. What are you talking about? No, he's not. He's just like his own thing. He's not Nespada. I- Bro. He's not considered one of the Espada. Is he? No, he's Paul. not. No, he's he's, he's no. like his own. Yeah. What <laughs> is this? I don't. Why is this a big deal? I, I just always thought he was a member of the Espada. No, oh. no, he's like I, he's oh, his right hand. That's oh my. That's right. That's right. So I always I kept thinking he was a Spada number two. Oh, Baragon is also a person of color. My boy Baragon oh, yeah, Baragon. Bond. That's true. Skeleton, skeleton man. I yeah, love him Skeletor. So he yeah. gets shat on by the like overall fan base for Bleach. He yeah. is so sick. Put respect on his name. I know he kind of goes out like a goober, but up until then, he is literally unstoppable and puts hands on everybody. So That's true. silence heathens. That's true. 
They had to beat him through absolute, you just made that up bullshit. <laughs> it's like, you're decay. You can't protect against your own decay. So we're going to put your arm inside of you. I, I'm sorry. Even he was like, I'm sorry. What? How did you it know was that? Kind of a How did you figure maneuver? that out? I didn't even know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really was. It After was. he tanked three genuine nuclear blasts to the face and was like, now you're just making things up because you're salty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was a, it was a man in the mirror. That's some bullshit. You just pulled it. <laughs> yeah, that's some bullshit. You just pulled. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that episode. <laughs> anyway, so good. Anyway, anyway. Back to fucking paladins. <laughs> there was, yeah. So uh, there was no. Uh, I, I did not. Uh, there. I mean, I guess uh, Ancients, for the Ancient- Ultimations paladin art. Ancient's cool. I like that Ancient's getting looked at again because it's like uh, thematically one of my faves. Yes, yes. And it, it, it always felt kind of like paper mache, like it was kind of thrown together. But now it seems like there's bit, like a yes. targeted effort to make it cooler. Yes. Uh, now, the one everyone actually cares about is Vengeance. Vengeance. Uh, Vow of Enmity now activates on a successful hit, kind of like how uh, Smite used to. It has a longer range and is transferable, kind of like Bane. That is fucking awesome. You know, everything really, about that is sick. I love it. You know, what's really funny about the transferable part. Mm. The idea of it being transferable is so in line with everything else in the game that I already thought it worked that way. I it should. It should work that way. And <laughs> when, yet it doesn't. When, and it always miffed the shit out of me. When, when the crocker pot mentioned that that they're changing oh it to work God. that way, I literally was like, wait, it didn't do that before? I was like s- I was so confused. <laughs> because I just assumed it works that way. Yeah. Uh so I'm glad they're changing that because it's fucking dumb that it doesn't. <laughs> Correct. Relentless uh, Avenger uh, allows you to. Uh, oh, Relentless Avenger sets the target speed to zero when they are hit with it. An Avenging Angel can be recharged with fifth level spell slots. That's pretty cool. I'm still. I want to see what Avenging Angel actually does now, True. because I'm still of the opinion that for what you get for it, it's not really worth a subclass capstone ability. Just growing wings and doing a little bit more damage. It's just like. It's cool that it's a sicko mode, but it's not a capstone sicko mode. It's it's it, yeah, about it's like as it's like a swarm of dread. It's like an okay sicko mode, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I will say the idea of burning spell slots to util- to like reutilize abilities, like utilize them over and over again, I like a lot. And I think it's so. I think it is so funny that back in the day, in the original 2014 version of things, they were like. Yeah, so like, you know, tieflings get hellish rebuke and darkness for free as part of their like species. Like, cool, cool, cool. So I can just use my spell slots on those, right? No, no, you only get one a day. What? What? But I have spell slots. But I'm a tiefling sorcerer. I can't just use my spell slots? No. No, these are special abilities. These are special spells that don't use spell slots. You're like, what? Why? (laughs) I'm not even going to lie. I'm just sort of of the opinion that they should be at will abilities. They should just be infinite. And I know he's like, well, hell, Shabuke does damage. Hell, 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 hell. Shabuke is Shut pretty up. strong. Yes, I, know. I don't know that you could make that strong. one at, be, at will. It's a little too strong for that. I get, but like darkness? darkness, darkness, maybe darkness, maybe. But the fact that they're making them spell slots, I think, is a very reasonable compromise. It is. Yes. Hard agree. And it should have worked that way before. <laughs> Also hard agree. Uh, so yeah, the, on to the next point of business. Yeah, go on. Uh huh. No, no, I was just gonna say. So yes, oh, doing doing that with more stuff is is a good idea. That's all. That's mm. all my point was. Uh, Fine Steed is now a spell that is always prepared and can be cast once per long rest for free, and it comes with Yo, its own unique stat. Fine block. Steed is fucking sick now. It is, and I, I think it's really funny because I I for some reason it's sort of the opposite of Divine Smite for me where I'm fine with it being a spell that you always have prepared. But I feel like in my head, it's because this spell does not ever be, it's never cast that much, right? You cast it and then you know, you're, you're almost certainly you're not going to bring it back mid combat, right? Cause it's just, if it dies again, then you're no. going to have wasted a spell slot. So for what it's worth, the fact that it lasts a pretty long time, 
you're pretty much only gonna need to cast this once a day anyway so that's yes that's well cool. uh, yeah the idea of util- it being utilized by a spell slot is just a very clean and simple resource to you to have be used on the ability and because you're not going to use it that that often it's not a huge deal for it to be treated as a spell slot like you said you're not going to really summon it in combat so you don't have to worry about it getting like counter spelled you're not going to burn a ton of spell slots on it. You're not going to burn a turn utilizing it when you could be doing something else. Like it's not the kind of ability that you would be used in that way. So it's fine being used up by a spell slot. Whereas divine fight, divine smite is very explicitly while well, you're involved in a fight in the middle of the action. That's where it becomes a different situation. It's all, it, you know, it goes back to the how often do you use a thing? If you use a thing less often, how valuable is the resource relative to how often you use it? You know, that that whole balance of the situation. Mm-hmm. I just really like that Divine Steed now is a preset stat block that changes based on what kind of steed you summoned and you can just make it whatever steed you want. I just think that's fucking sick. Like, I'm a, you know... I'm a paladin who's like from the Feywild, so I'm going to summon a fairy steed and you summon like a weird unicorn horse with fairy wings or butterfly wings or something like that. You know, like I I, love that idea. I only know this because a friend of mine is a brony. I believe that's called an alicorn. And I don't want to I don't want to get it. No, 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 it's fine. Don't worry. I'm just going to go eat a 12 gauge now. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, you should do that. Um, Yeah, the idea of like how fine steed is reworked, I think is fucking sick. I'm very happy with that whole situation. And hopefully, uh, because the stat block also scales up, kind of like how ranger pets scale up, uh, find steed will be more useful as time goes on. So my question is, so the cool thing about find steed back when it, you know, you use individual stat blocks was that it could fly. I really, I'm going to be a little annoyed if it doesn't have a fly speed. I'm going to be real. So I think it gets upgraded at a certain point it was in the playtest oh god let me i i'm gonna i can try and find it really fast in the playtest i believe what happens is it gets upgraded at a certain point and then acquires the option of a fly speed i think um so i want so if it does because, uh, you know, if you aren't using fine steed to uh, improved fine steed or whatever it's called, fine greater steed, if you're not using that to make a velociraptor, you're just doing it wrong. So now if you have a velociraptor that can fly. I- yes. Uh, interesting yes. choice. Interesting. I just uh, so at pretty much any time I think of a dinosaur in D&D. I think of the the one Dark Souls video where it's the like the guy turning into the different uh, like dragon people in Dark Souls, and it's 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 all in Italian too, which is great. So it's a you know Loro sono the dragone in Dark Souls uno, and it's like two, and then with the third because you know the dragons in Dark Souls three like yapped as fuck. It's like you know sono, and it just starts screaming <laughs> with like an agony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you just summon, it's like the stupid fucking rams in uh, Thor Love and Thunder. It's just screeching uh, at the top of its lungs at all times. I love the screaming rams. I hated them I so much, the but like rams. in the best way possible. It's it like, I'm happy that Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder are finally getting some representation. But also I fucking hated the screaming. <laughs> no, I thought the screaming was so funny. I, You know what made it so funny to me is that they committed to the bit so hard that they used it constantly and often inappropriately. And that's what made it hilarious is that they just refused to drop it. They just did not let that bit go. <laughs> that made it so the much funny. The commitment to the bit was impressive, admittedly. It made it yeah. so funny. Would they fly to the fucking moon and you hear the goat scream and then hit into the moon? I was in fucking tears. <laughs> that shit <laughs> killed me. <laughs> that was so funny. So, to, but to answer, okay, I found it. So to answer your question, um, so in the playtest, the otherworldly steed is a large celestial fiend or fey, which you choose while you're when you cast it, and it has a sixty foot speed and a sixty foot fly speed, uh, and then it says required fourth level spell or higher. So I think what it's saying is you have to cast it at fourth level to get the fly speed. 
So basically, you cast it higher, you can get the fly. Mm. So, Flying Velociraptor, here I come. Yes. So that's in the play test. They're probably going to rework it a little bit language wise, but I would assume if it's in that mo- if it was in that most recent play test, it's probably going to stick around in some capacity. So yes, Flying Velociraptor. Good. Yes. Uh, on to the next thing. Abjur Foes is a new channel divinity that works like the cleric's turn ability. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, the I, target I, uh, number affected is it's a modifier based thing, which is weird. Because why is it this the thing that's based on your modifier? Um, I don't I, really get it. I kind of understand this being the thing that's based on your primary stat modifier because this is sort of a less important, less influential ability. Like, if you have a low charisma and it makes your abjure foe's ability not as effective, that's not going to completely fuck you over in terms of playing your paladin, right? Whereas if you have, you know, if your, uh, you know, number of spell slots is tied to your charisma modifier and your charisma modifier is only a plus one, that does actively hamper you playing the entire class, whereas this is just a kind of niche specific ability. So I understand them tying it to that because it's not as important. You know, it's a little something extra if you do want to dabble further into charisma. Like, I sort of get it. It does feel weird the way they're kind of picking and choosing, but I kind of see their logic. Yeah, I suppose. I get it. That being said, I I understand giving paladins the ability to abjure, like with the abjure foes, but also... I I don't know. we We stepping on Cleric's toes a little on this one. I don't think so, just because they get it way later on. And it almost certainly will not be as good because uh, as far as I'm aware, they haven't said anything about it, but as far as I'm aware, they can't destroy enemies. And I, as far as I, as far, unless they've changed it, I almost said as far as more twice, unless they changed it, the clerics one still just affects everything in a radius. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. I don't know. I, <sighs> Okay, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna read it from the playtest real quick. Uh, as a magic action, you expend one use of your channel divinity to overwhelm foes with divine awe. As you present your holy symbol or weapon, you choose a target number of creatures equal to your charisma modifier that you can see within 60 feet. Each target must succeed on a wisdom save throw, or have uh, the or have the dazed and frightened condition for one minute, uh, or until it takes any damage. They get that at level nine. I mean, they get it later, but I don't know. Did Paladin really need that when Cleric already had that? No, it, it. I mean, no, it didn't. But it does affect things that are other than undead. And the thing that I think is really interesting is you can couple them. So if you have a Paladin and a Cleric and you turn undead and it's like, oh, no, the vampire isn't affected by turn undead. And the Paladin steps up and goes... Yeah, but he's affected by this. That would be pretty cool, you know? I guess, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I don't totally hate it, but, you know, there's there's always a fine line between giving class cool ability and stepping on the, knee, you know, stepping on other classes' toes. There's always a very fine line there that can be, you know, if you cross it, can feel shitty. I agree, but I do think this one, this is one of the times where I think it works, right? A paladin is just sort of a mix between a fighter and a cleric anyway. It is. So them having some slight overlap makes sense. Yeah, like thematically it makes sense. I just wonder if mechanically, if it's going to make certain people playing cleric be like, why do they get my thing? Like turn undead is kind of one of the cleric's things, you know? Yeah. So like our our cleric player is going to look at that and be like, why do they get my thing? You know, I don't know. So you just look at them and go, I don't know. You're like the strongest class in the game. Stop crying. <laughs> I, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, where, 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 
the auras. Uh, so the auras, if I'm understanding this right, and I was a little unclear about this, but I'm just going to say it. In, I, I in, think you are judging by what you wrote down. So I think you're getting it. Okay. So the auras seem to have been wrapped up into one another. Yes. And now are going to be heavily based on subclass. And the subclass is going to change what it does. Yeah, basically. This is great. Every paladin on, has yeah. the default paladin aura. And then the subclass modifies your aura. That's basically what it is. Yeah, this is great. Uh, the aura bloat got ridiculous it did. for me and for Josh at high level because you're like I, which one is which which one is which why is one 15 feet and the other's 30 feet yes how do they overlap what what's going on here why yeah so in the for why <laughs> in the playtest uh, six level aura of protection you radiate a protective invisible aura that extends 10 feet uh, but doesn't extend through total cover. Uh, the aura is inactive while you are in, while you have the incapacitated condition. Side note, wizards, thank you for specifying that while you're incapacitated, your aura turns off because everybody had questions about that one. Uh, for a very long time, yes. Yeah. You and your allies in the aura gain a bonus to saving throws equal to your charisma modifier. If another present, if another paladin is present. A creature can benefit from only one aura of protection at a time. The creature chooses which one when entering the auras. So that's their six level one. Uh, and that's the sort of default paladin one aura protection. Everybody gets a bonus to saving throws equal to your charisma modifier. And then, yeah, the subclasses will then futz around with that. So the devotion paladin gets aura of devotion. You and your allies are immune to the charm condition while in your aura of protection. Uh, if a charmed ally enters the aura, the condition has no effect on that ally while there. Uh, so, yeah, it's like you have the base one and then your subclass adds on to your base one. Uh, which, yes, is a much cleaner way to do it rather than just giving you a whole new aura with a whole new can of worms. You know what's funny is having it so the subclass modifies the existing aura ability, you could argue is kind of already was how it was working anyway. It was just more confusingly written before. Yeah, it, it was just codified a lot worse. It was, yeah, because, it, you know, essentially, you know, the two auras stacked on top of each other and modified each other. So it kind of was already doing that. It just was written poorly and confusingly yes so now speaking of clarifying clarified <laughs> or of courage now specifically clears the frightened condition as well yeah i mean thank yeah. god uh which one who gets the aura of courage again i believe it's glory nah glory gets aura of alacrity and maybe devotion devotion just got the one i was saying before aura of devotion that's talking about charm. Huh. Yeah, I don't. And I don't know. I don't remember who gets that. I'm trying to see aura of wording is the ancients. Huh. Forget what the four palette. It's oath, glory, ancients. What's the fourth one? Vengeance, vengeance, right? Vengeance. Maybe eventually. I don't know. Whatever. But yes. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, Paladin Smite also works with unarmed strikes now. It does. Uh, but not ranged attacks. I Yeah, they backed off on I that one. I feel like this is I feel like this is still just the how they view it versus anything balance related. I feel no. like it should work with ranged attacks. I no, I, I think what this one was is we need to give people a reason to play Ranger. But rangers don't have any uh, as far as I'm aware no ranger specifically gives you uh, uh, boons for using range attacks uh, rangers have a couple range specific spells that are uh, range weapons for them um, and I, I, I think it's honestly just a case of they were like if we let paladins be really good with ranged weapons on top of being good with melee weapons then ranger will just die in the wasteland <laughs> I think they just didn't want to discourage 
like all, even more than they already are discouraging ranger play i don't think they want to make that worse you know what i mean fair enough i hadn't even thought about that i i i think that's what it is i mean i don't know 100 percent uh we have not you know uh, the the crawfish did not hand me a, a letter specifying, but that's my guess. Hmm. So yeah. Well, either way, uh, the so formerly improved divine smite now re- uh, referred to as radiant strikes Thank also works with unarmed strikes. God. Jesus. Yeah, improved divine smite was such a terrible name. Such a bad name because it had literally nothing to do with divine smite at all. <laughs> no none radiant strikes is a is so much more in line with what that ability actually does oh my god you just smack harder that's it yeah your you natural smack harder smackos, you, smack harder your natural smackos have radiant damage that's what it does radiant strikes like it, it doesn't improve divine smite in any way i mean it, i guess you could argue it does because more damage on normal attacks but like it, you don't need to use divine smite to d- it dumb just dumb bad name problem solved <laughs> uh, yeah as a small aside uh mr jawcraw has uh Jokari given us information Crawfrey. about a new ao fuck you a new type of aoes that is being referred to in-house as emanation zones they're just putting a name on something that's been there forever nothing huge yeah no it's not even a, it's not even a new rule it's literally just a vocab word it's just a tag that they are putting in the game to clarify when it, it when it's relevant and an emanation is just an aura that spreads out from a, uh, a you know a player or an NPC that moves with the NPC so like aura of protection is an emanation because as the paladin moves the aura of protection moves with them uh, it, it as he specifies in the video it already existed in the game the point is just by giving it a name you can refer back to it when necessary and you can help you know sort of clean up language in other places where you know the paragraph was longer than it needed to be yes now as an aside in my notes this is this is how uh how cringe and gundam pilled i am i every time i've looked at aoe since we started this podcast my brain auto uh, autocorrects not from uh, area of effect but to advance of zeta and I'm just like, stop. That's not what it is. Cut that shit out. <laughs> How does E equal Zeta? What? I, I it's, So it's advance of Zeta is always shown as A-O-Z, not A-O-E. So every time I'm like, no, that just be a Z. This advance of Zeta, not, not area of effect. I'm like, that's not. No, shut up. <laughs> this is how I know you're not a big MMO player. <laughs> tell, tell me you didn't play I a mean, lot AOE of MMOs is more without than, telling me I you mean, didn't play I, lay a lot of MMOs. I don't think AOE is a specifically... I, that's an everything thing. Uh, no, it comes from MMOs. I'm sure it does, but at this point, it's just a, a like anachronous term. I mean, yeah, at this point, it's a video game term, but MMOs really like are what brought that into common parlance. And if you ever played a lot of MMOs back in the day, you would only ever associate AOE with area of effect. You would, could never decouple the two. <laughs> played a lot of RuneScape back in the day. Uh, I guess you didn't do any raiding in RuneScape. Uh, no, I did not. Well, there you go. Uh, but yeah. Is there there anything else? Uh, oh yeah, just two small things. Paladin's Restoring Touch allows you to clear multiple conditions per stack of 5 HP that you spend, so you no longer have to go, oh, well... I have enough points, but this is going to take a couple turns. Which, yeah, okay, I, thank God. That was so I mean, stupid. you basically could already do it that way anyway. So like, yeah, not a big deal. They're just sort of codifying it. Yeah. A something interesting that they put in that is now this is class neutral. All spell casting classes will have this. Your spell list will now include the spell's name, school, components, concentration, and whether or not it's a ritual. That's fantastic because now you don't need to have 18 million book uh, bookmarks cycling through your spell lists when you're trying to prepare them or what have you. It will just tell you a lot of the basing information. And if you need to know the minutiae, you can look, look for it in the book. This is great. 
I'm a little confused as to how this is actually going to visually look in the books. I wasn't totally clear on what he meant when he explained it, so sure, it, but I mean, it, there's it, a solid chance that it'll look kind of bloated, but that's what I'm thinking. I'd still prefer some some but, aesthetic uh, organization to having to flip through a bunch. Yeah, I mean, if it it. it it sounds like they're just looking at spell organization, which is just good in general, so I'll take it. Uh, I was just a little unclear on exactly what he meant when he was describing it. Hmm. Uh, we'll see. I guess. Yes, we will. Uh, with that, that's pretty much the end of my notes. So, do you have any, any weird other thoughts? We spot the end, uh... Yeah. Um, you know, with the whole 2024 thing, I, I'm being, I'm being marketed to, and I don't like, because <laughs> for a while there, I was like, nah, fuck these 2024 rules. This shit's dumb. They're just moving the furniture around. And like, they still kind of are, but also they're making me kind of hype at the same time. So yeah, I'm having the same problem where it's like, I, I want to stay mad. Yeah. But they are doing some objectively cool shit. So fuck, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I, I, the one that got me particularly excited was the Warlock video. When I heard about the changes they were doing. One. Yeah. When I heard about the changes they were doing with Warlock and invocations and stuff, I was very happy about that. So I'm just kind of sitting here like, uh, all right. Well, I guess I'm pretty interested. The fact that they made Gulak actually sound more viable. <laughs> Which is did they you know, really? Yeah, it, it sounded like it. Yeah, um, I forget exactly mm. what the changes were, but I remember listening and being like, "Ah, it sounds like we're getting somewhere." So I was, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm getting excited for the 2024 release. I'm really annoyed that we did not land on a fucking name for it, but here we are. D&D 5e 2024, I guess, is what we're going with. Just a lot of numbers. Just given, Josh. Just call it one D&D's nuts. Just do it. No, because they don't. It's, they, we completely dropped the one D&D thing entirely. That's been gone for so long. We can't even call it that anymore. But it's a unique thing, and it might, you might as well, because you got nothing else to call it, buddy. I don't know. I, ha I, I We'll see. I feel like community-wise, it's going to get a new name at some point. But we'll see. I'm going to make a targeted effort for people to start calling it one D and D's nuts. <laughs> I really do not think you're going to get that through, but you could try it, chief. You could try. I feel like I, I will. I, I don't know. I feel like five E revise is probably going to be fun. I don't like that one. So I, have I just feel like 5.5 works. I don't get it. Just call we, it. 5. They, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They don't want to be associated with third edition. Even though they made third edition. Their third edition is the ugly stepchild that they don't want to talk about. Yeah, that's fourth edition, sir. No, no. Fourth edition is Drake's forgotten child. <laughs> <laughs> fourth edition is the one that somebody's going to pull out of the woodwork one day and be like, y'all, y'all know you made this, right? And th this fucking <laughs> the crawfish going to crawl out the pot and be like, put that away. No, it's going to be the, the Dragon Ball Z bridge. It's like, you're a child. I have one of those. Yes. Oh, God, I have two of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, I have two of those. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. I'm not that angry about the Paladin changes. I accept the Divine Smite situation because I knew something was going to happen. There was no way that thing came out unscathed. Unfortunately. But, uh... And for the record... For the record, but I also mostly liked these changes. Eh? I guess. I mean, it was mostly the smite one. I knew it would be a point of contention. No, this goes far deeper, sir. This is this is me proving to you and the universe that I don't just hate things because they're new. Uh, I think you still got a way to go on that one. Mm, we'll see. For context, Isaiah hates everything new. I don't. I literally don't. <laughs> he says he doesn't, but anytime things get re get 
or new or revamped. He's always a little salty about it. So, you know. It's not every time. It's only when it's dumb. It's often. Only when it's dumb. Okay. Ever you want to slice that turkey. Ever when you, you, however you want to cook your crawfish. That's right. I, I am going to slice that turkey and I'm going to fuck the fear turkey too. You know what? Oh, all right. It was the Elsing abridged. You know, I haven't watched that. How many times? Do we- I, I keep forgetting. I look because it's such a common parlance now that people watched Helsing Abridged growing up I, that I just sort of assume that you did. And I know you keep saying you didn't, but I, I just my brain is like, no, he watched it. There's I've a whole told bit you so many times. I know. Look, there's a whole bit where Alucard <laughs> writes death threats to the Pope and he oh. keeps doing it. <laughs> and he's handwriting these letters and sending them to the Pope via carrier pigeon. Oh, and he goes, and you might be wondering why I send these letters. It is only to instill as much fear as I can, like basting a turkey to which I then intend to have sex with. That's right. I'm going to fuck the fear turkey. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and then, he, then he's like, please follow me on Twitter, the Crimson Fucker. <laughs> uh, oh, OK. That was a real. That was a real Twitter account that was active for a couple of years. I'm sure like it was a fucking ro- account where they were just making tweets as Alucard. It's very funny. I I believe that wholeheartedly. We have to watch Helsing Bridge now. That like we have to. Sure. I, I I forced you all to sit down and watch Helsing Ultimate. I feel like we have to watch the abridged. You didn't force me to watch Helsing Ultimate. I've never watched Helsing Ultimate. Yes, you did. No, I literally I streamed no. it like a year ago. No, I did. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. I, I, no, I have never watched that show, my guy. <laughs> I I literally sat everyone down. I well, maybe didn't sat you down. We were in the chat and I streamed it and I know you were watching it because you were making comments about it. I, I mean, watching and making comments about it are not the same thing. <laughs> you can't make comments I, about it if you're not at least partially watching it. I mean, Paying vague, incredibly vague attention, maybe, while I was playing fucking 14. Or, this is a dumb argument. Why are we having this right now? Nobody cares about this. It's fine. We're this still is, recording. This is bloopers that we're never going to actually We are do. still it's recording. Fine. This is not relevant information. Follow oh, us on Twitter at the Crimson it. Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> not actually, though. Do follow right. us on Twitter. With at, that, we're calling it. <laughs> do follow us at Sessions Cancel. Now yes, please follow us. Uh, give us a subscribe, like, share, do all that fun stuff. Stop. Stop. Too many things. Too long of a list. We're done now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>